What's going on everyone? DSP here and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series. And today we're going to be... Today we're going to be reviewing a game that is one of these games that is such a long-running franchise in gaming that when a new version of it comes out, you're going to have a massively polarized audience. You're going to have one group of people who have been playing this, you know, these games since day one, and they're hardcore fans, and no matter what, they're going to say this is the best game ever. Okay. On the other hand, you're going to have people who are going to hate it. Oh, fuck this, you know, it's too old school. And then you're going to have people who are middle of the road. And, uh, you know, I know that no matter what I say in this review, that I'm going to be flamed incessantly. And so I'm warning you right now, back the fuck off, because the hateful truth is honest and fair and balanced, and I'm not going to take your shit, and so I'm going to fucking stab you in your balls <laughs> with this sword if you start talking shit on this video. Okay, so I'm obviously kidding. Today we're talking about Zelda, well, The Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword, okay? So let's talk about it, because I've really, really been wanting to do this video. This game, I've played now for something like 36 hours, and finally beat it, and I really want to get my honest feelings out there. I get the feeling a lot of people want to hear what I have to say, because you know that my reviews are honest. Um, okay. Zelda Skyward Sword. Surrounded by massive controversy. Since day one, since it was announced, because... You knew that this number one, it was going to be probably the last good game for the Wii. The Wii has had a... I don't even know how to describe it. It's run. It's, it's been a console that's been extremely successful, but not for the games. It's been extremely successful for a gimmick of idiots standing in front of their TVs waggling around like fucking retards, thinking that this is added value to your gameplay, when in reality it just makes you look like a fucking idiot, okay? Motion controls are extremely controversial. They have been since day one, and they're always going to be because they're a gimmick. And so when it was announced that Skyward Sword was coming out for the Nintendo Wii, it was going to be the last, probably, good game for the Wii, because now the Wii U will be coming out, hopefully, next year. And, uh, and that it was going to require motion controls no matter what. That was it. It was like explosion. Some people were excited. Some people were pissed. You know, taking Zelda... <clears throat> a traditional gaming franchise that's been there since the 1980s into the modern day with motion controls. A lot of people said this is going to ruin the experience, and some people thought, all right, maybe it won't be that bad. And then, of course, there was the whole E3 debacle in 2010 when Miyamoto himself was trying to demo the game and couldn't roll a bomb on the ground and end up blowing himself up on stage, and everyone said, what the fuck? So it was really, really <clears throat> just controversial, the whole idea of taking this game and putting it into the modern era with motion controls. So we're going to talk about Skyward Sword, and we're going to talk about, first of all, all the different parts of it, what I thought about each one, uh, and then we're going to talk about it as a whole, what I liked about the game, what I didn't like about the game, and then my final review of the game, okay? So first of all, let's let's get all the, the, the big topics settled. Number one, the graphics. Everyone said, oh, Skyward Sword, it's going to be on the Wii, it's only going to be 480p, it's not high definition, Nintendo really screwed the pooch here by not making an HD console. This game would have been amazing if it were in HD. How can you sell a game that's not in HD? I'll assuade everyone's fears right now, okay? If you watch my playthrough, you probably already know this, but the graphics aren't bad. The graphics, sure, they're a little bit pixely. You know, Nintendo really pushes the limits of what it can do with a standard definition engine in Skyward Sword. But I actually enjoyed the graphical design of this game. It didn't... It didn't take Zelda into the hardcore mainstream where everything is gray and brown, okay? It's a very colorful world of Hyrule. Um, and by the way, they don't even call it Hyrule in this game, which is pretty funny. Um, but, <clears throat> very colorful graphical design. And what you'll notice is that the main characters, like Link, Zelda, all the people, the bosses, extremely detailed. Everything looks great. But then when you kind of look at the... The other things, like the backgrounds, the 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 the, the graphics on the wall, a, a book on a table that's in the background, 
they're really rendered poorly. And I think what Nintendo really tried to do here was say, focus on the important stuff. The stuff that people are going to be looking at 99% of the time, make that look amazing, and everything else, whatever. It's pretty much what their attitude was. So, you're going to see a lot of the times in the Skyward Sword, wow, you're having a, a the, the graphics look great, Link is, is highly detailed, he's fighting this awesome monster, and then you look at the background and it looks like it's three fucking pixels. So, that's pretty much the graphical design of Skyward Sword. But I don't, I'm not complaining. I actually enjoyed the graphics of the game. The different locales, of course, you're going to have your typical, oh, there's a... You know, there's a forest, there's a desert, there's a volcano, there's, you know, the different locales that are typical of a Zelda game. They all look unique, they all look interesting, and I think they actually did, for what they could do with the standard definition graphics engine, they did a good job. Now compare this to a game like Conduit 2 that I played earlier this year, where they didn't know what the fuck they were doing, and you couldn't even tell what anything was in the fucking game. And that's why when I play games like Conduit 2 and I compare it to something like this, I get so angry because there's a game that they really should have put the effort in. It's an FPS game, and if you had more detail, you could see what the fuck you're doing. In this game, I could tell what I was doing at all times, so fuck the developers of Conduit 2. But I digress. That has nothing to do with Skyward Sword. I'm just trying to show you in comparison that these guys did a really good job with the graphics. The other elephant in the room. <clears throat> the controls. Let's, let's get this out of the way, okay? The controls of Zelda Skyward Sword are hit or miss. I'd actually say that probably about 80% of the time they're good. And 20% of the time you will be insanely frustrated and want to rip your fucking hair out of your head. Now what I mean by that is when you're fighting in the game, you swing your remote left and right to actually swing your sword. It's not like other Wii games where you just go like this, uh, you waggle around like an asshole. It's actually accurate to where you're pointing your remote. So if your remote's up here, your sword will be held up there. If you hold it here, it'll be there. In fact, there's actually attacks in the game where you have to attack from low to high, from high to low, left to right, up to down. You have to hold your sword above your head to charge an attack and then swing it like this. So there are control-sensitive attacks in the game. And what I would say is it actually does add to the game. I actually enjoy the combat of Skyward Sword a lot. I thought that it was pretty ingenuous how they did this, okay? That being said, a lot of the other motion controls are complete fucking balls. For example, when you have a bomb and there's a couple times in the game when it's required that you roll the bomb on the ground. It doesn't work. And a lot of people have left coming, oh, of course it works, Phil, you don't know what you're doing. Listen, all I know, I can speak to my setup. My sensor that's in front of my TV, my Wiimote, it doesn't work. It's very hard to get the Wiimote to tell if you're holding the bomb above your head, if you're holding it in your hands, if you're rolling it on the ground, and you go like this, like you're playing golf or you're playing Wii Bowling. And this is the exact control that Miyamoto could not do at E3 2010, and I had a hard time doing it too. I'm not fucking surprised. It seems to me that this is a difficult control that they didn't perfect for the game, and if Miyamoto can't do it, I probably can't do it either. There are a couple other controls in the game that you're going to have some difficulty with. The, the major difficulty of the game comes with the fact that the Wiimote sometimes uncalibrates itself. Let's be honest. You're going to take a break. You're going to go get a drink, take a piss, your phone's going to ring. And so your remote's not always going to be pointed directly at your sensor, and it's going to uncalibrate itself. So you're, what you're going to have to do is constantly be pressing down on the D-pad to recenter. Now, just that being said, I'm not constantly doing it all the time. It's maybe once every couple hours. It, it, or not even a couple hours. I want to say a couple, maybe once an hour. It'll uncalibrate and have to do it, and it recalibrates itself, and it's not a big deal. But... There will be frustrating parts of this game where you want to do something and you just can't seem to control Link the way that you want to. Whether you're climbing on a wall and you're trying to make him go fast by waggling the Wiimote like this, or whether even with the thumbstick sometimes, this game, the control scheme, seems to be an unforgiving 1980s, 1990s style game where <clears throat> in most games today, when you walk to the edge of a ledge, okay, you're on the edge of a ledge here, your guy will go, whoa, you're about to fall. And he'll even have almost like an animation, like he's on the edge of the ledge and he, so to stop you from falling. In this game, Link says, fuck that, runs right off the ledge and kills himself. And he'll do this repeatedly. Um, and it is frustrating when you're trying to get across an important part of a dungeon or whatever, and Link, you know, will just run the fuck off a ledge. And also, the fact that you have no control over the camera in this game besides focusing, which is the Z button on your nunchuck. So when you press Z, your camera will focus behind you, but 
there will be parts of this game where you'll be running around a corner, you'll be doing something intricate, and you're trying to do something quickly, and the camera isn't faced forward, so you have no fucking idea where you're going, and you run right off a ledge. Or you fuck up in what you're trying to do. You get attacked from behind. This happens constantly. This game, the camera is stuck in the 90s. The camera, I, I will f defend this point till the day I die, the camera in Skyward Sword is a 1990s style gaming camera. It doesn't follow Link, and I don't know if they just didn't fucking care. They said, this is Zelda, so we don't have to modernize our camera, but you have to constantly be pressing the Z button to see what the fuck you're doing, which is pretty much what you had to do in Super Mario 64. You had to constantly be focusing the camera in order to see where the fuck you were going. I don't know why the hell they couldn't fix that, but for the most part, the controls themselves work. There will be some frustrating parts of the game, but... I actually think that the, the, you know, the actual swinging of the sword and stuff was fun and actually did add some value to the game. I'll openly admit that, okay? <clears throat> okay. The, the, the gameplay of the game itself is classic Zelda gameplay. You're going to have a, a set of dungeons. There's actually seven dungeons in the game. You're going to have boss battles. You're going to have uh, an open world atmosphere where you can revisit locales if you want to find items. The items can be used for multiple purposes. Sometimes you can use them to upgrade a potion that you buy at a store and it becomes a better a better potion that maybe instead of only filling up eight of your hearts, fills up all of your hearts. Uh, you're going to be looking for heart pieces constantly so you can upgrade your health capacity. But at the same time, the game doesn't force you to. You can also <clears throat> buy certain items in the game that will add hearts to your meter. So I actually bought two medals in the game, or found two, I think. I bought one and I found one. They each added a heart to my meter, so I ended up having something like, I don't know, 17 or 18 hearts by the end of the game, which was really useful. Um, there were also things that you can upgrade, and when I say upgrade, I mean like you'll have a shield, but you can get a better shield. You can have uh, a net, or you can make a bigger net, and, you know, it's all the typical Zelda stuff, uh, but I really never found a time during the game where the upgrades were any use. Like, the upgrades seemed completely superfluous to the gameplay. I only upgraded one or two things the entire game, and it really didn't help me at all. So I don't really understand what that's there for, except for the fact that they could say, oh, it's an open world, you can search for items to upgrade stuff. And they can say that, but that's great. If it doesn't add to the gameplay, what's the point? Um, the items in the game, typical Zelda items. You're going to have uh, a, a slingshot, which later you can upgrade. You're going to have arrows, which pretty much make the slingshot completely worthless once you find them, but you don't find them until very late in the game, which was surprising to me. Uh, you're going to find bombs, you're going to find a uh, uh, hook, I call it the hook shot because I grew up with classic Zelda, but in this game they call it the claw shot, um, a net to catch things with, uh, all your typical Zelda stuff is here, okay, and there are some new additions, there's a whip which uses the motion controls, interestingly, what I have to say is, a lot of the things seem to be like, kind of thrown in there just for the fact that they could say that there was another item. Like, the whip, you're going to use it for a couple puzzles, and that's it. You're not going to use it for combat. You're not going to use it for much of the game. It's only for a very limited amount of the game when you use this whip. On the, on the flip side of that, <clears throat> things like the claw shot, you use all the time for puzzles. So it's, like, really weird that they said, oh, we're going to put these items in the game, one we're barely going to use, and one you're going to use all the time. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird. Um, but, yeah, your typical Zelda gameplay. You're going to go and fight stuff. You're going to find rupees, you're going to get a random item drops, and you're going to use it to buy and upgrade stuff. You're going to have potions. Uh, there's side quests in the game. The side quests are primarily to get better items. So by doing side quests, you can get another bottle, so you can hold another potion or another fairy. Um, you can actually upgrade your rupee capacity. So right now, at the beginning of the game, you can only hold something like 300 rupees at a time, but the more that you play and the more that you unlock and the more side quests you do, you can hold more and more rupees in your wallet, per se. And so then you can buy better stuff and upgrade your, your person during the game. Um, and it's pretty interesting. The characters in the game, they're, they're, you're, you start out... Well, I guess the basic story I guess we should get into as well is that uh, there, at one point there was some evil on the planet, and so there was a goddess, and the goddess said, I'm going to take this force that can seal away the evil and put it in the sky so no one can get to it. And so you end up starting off the game as Link and Zelda living on this sky island, and you don't even know that there's a world below the clouds. And then, of course, something happens. Zelda's kidnapped. You have to find her. And you end up going down to the earth to multiple locales and, uh, and following her around. And I'm not going to give too much away about the plot, 
But uh, what I will say is that the plot, if you wouldn't even know this unless you beat the game, because the game doesn't even ex show any of this until you beat it, but this game actually is, uh, it has continuity with the Zelda universe. This game actually links itself to Ocarina of Time and a bunch of other games. So when you beat it, you're going to say, oh, I recognize that. Ah, that finally makes sense. Uh, and it's weird that they, they make you beat the game before you understand that, but I did like that about the game. Um, <clears throat> there's an a, a, uh, antagonist. I don't know what the fuck his name is. Gurugimagimanim? I don't know. He's a fucking fruit. He's really annoying. I don't know where they were going with making him, like, the main villain. But he's a pain in the ass. And really, he reminds me of, like, a mix between, like, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI and, I don't know, uh, some gender ambiguous asshole. He really is just stupid, his character design. For a game where you're trying to... You know, it, it, oh, this is a serious Zelda game. Let's put in a, a joking fruit as the, the main villain. What the fuck were they thinking? I don't know. Uh, but you're going to be going around doing typical Zelda things. You're going to have to try to beat three dungeons. Then all of a sudden, more dungeons unlock. You have to fight several large bosses. Oh, then you have to find mystical flames to power up your sword. Oh, then you have to fight more bosses. Oh, then you have to fight a, a, another boss. So, the plot will continue along. It's interesting. There's a time mechanic where you go back in time at one point. <clears throat> and it's typical Zelda. That's really all I have to say. It's typical Zelda. It's stuff that you would expect from a Zelda game. Is that bad? No, because as you know, Zelda games are good. So, I'm not complaining by any means. I think that Skyward Sword does a lot of things right. So, now let's talk about what I like about Skyward Sword. Um... I do actually like the combat itself of Skyward Sword. The actual physical combat, the, the, the fact that in certain fights you have to attack from the left, certain fights you have to attack from the right, uh, and certain, sometimes you have to you, you know, like fake them out, there's really ingenuous things that they did with the motion controls that I enjoy. I, I do like the combat. Again, the graphical design. I like the fact that the world is colorful, vibrant, a little bit on the cartoony side, but that's okay because it's Zelda, and Zelda originally was kind of cartoony, so it is pretty good that they do that. Um, the dungeons. I do have to say I, I enjoy the dungeons. I think that the dungeons, and especially the last dungeon, which I was kind of pissed off at because it was kind of difficult uh, to figure out because it's a puzzle within a puzzle. Not only do you have to solve the dungeon, but you're actually shift the rooms of the dungeon around in one of those weird tile puzzles, and it actually adds a, an added level of challenge to the dungeon. At first I was pissed, but then when I beat it, I was like, wow, that was actually pretty neat that they did that with the final dungeon. So, I liked what they did with the dungeons, and the fact that the dungeons are different themes. So what you're going to have, uh, oh, there's a cave dungeon, oh, there's a volcano dungeon, oh, there's, you know, a water dungeon. You're going to have these different themed things, and those are pretty neat. Um, and the puzzles are interesting. The puzzles are challenging, but never so fucking insanely hard and, uh, and, and nondescript and, and, and cryptic that you can't figure out what you're supposed to be doing. If you're a Zelda fan, if you're in the Zelda mindset, you're going to be able to figure out what you're supposed to be doing in all these dungeons, and I really enjoyed that. Keep in mind, I haven't played a Zelda game since Ocarina of Time. I did play Majora's Mask for like a day, and then I stopped playing. I didn't like it. But I was able to solve everything in this game without cheating. I didn't look any solutions up, per se. So... That's something to be said. The game is challenging, but not to the point where you're going to be ripping the hair out of your head because you're frustrated. <clears throat> the music is okay. I mean, there really are uh, there are some throwback themes you'll hear as you're playing the game. Wow, this sounds like it's a remix or it's a, a, a throwback to one of the original Zelda tunes. But for the most part, the music's kind of original, which is good. It's typical Zelda music, orchestral music. Um, so there are things about the game that I really enjoy, okay? But now let's talk about the negatives, okay? And there are a lot. Let's be honest. This game is not perfect. And so anyone who gave this game a perfect rating is an asshole. And I'm just going to stand by that. I don't care. This game is not perfect. You can't say this game is perfect. Because if you've played it, you realize it has things wrong with it. And also, there are things that are kind of annoying. You can't make a perfect game that has problems. So if you gave this game a 10, you're an asshole. It doesn't matter what media outlet you work for, you're a fucking lying asshole, okay? So, what didn't I like about the game? I've already said this, but it's worth saying again. The motion controls fail a lot of the time. Not a lot of the time. I said about one-fifth one of the time. 
you'll be in the middle of something really important, and oh my god, it's just, you know, you're having a lot of fun, and wait a minute, oh fuck, I can't get it to do what I need to do right now to survive. What the fuck? It's not working, it's not working, dead. Or, it's not working, it's not working, then finally it works, and you're like, fuck, I could have beaten this in, you know, ten seconds, instead it took me two minutes because I couldn't get the fucking motion control to do what I wanted to do. <clears throat> The number one complaint that I do have about this game, the backtracking. This game makes you backtrack an immense amount of time. And I don't know what they were thinking when they made you do this. Because there have been Zelda games that have anywhere from like 8 to 10 dungeons. Uh, and they never make you backtrack. In this game, there are three major locales. There's a forest, there's a desert, and there's a volcano. You have to return to each of these locales three times during the course of the game mandatorily in order to do different quests in these areas. And every time you go back, it's a little bit different, which is fine, but it's frustrating. And this has always been a thing with Zelda games. You see things around you that you really wish you could do right from the get-go. You're going to see targets fucking surrounding your face every single time you go anywhere. And it's not until halfway into the game that you get the claw shot and you can finally utilize those targets and you get so frustrated saying man I really wish I could just do my full potential now and you get blue balls waiting until you get that critical item where you can finally unlock everything around you but why they chose to only have three major locales in the game I have no idea maybe it was time constraints maybe it was space on the disc I don't know and I'm very confused about that that they did that but it is annoying that you have to keep going back to the same areas over and over and over and over. Also, a lot of repetition and um, annoying things in the game that really the game I think could have done without. There's a certain boss fight that you have to do three fucking times. Yeah, you fight the same boss three times. And there's a little bit of variation each time you do it, but it's annoying by the third time you're like, fuck, I gotta do this shit again. And there's another boss who's the boss fight you fight twice and it's pretty much identical and you're like why am I have to do this again I already beat this asshole um <clears throat> the flying and now you might say what does that mean uh oh there's flying mechanics in this game the way it works is you start off on this island in the sky you have a bird that you fly around this open world atmosphere to get to get to different areas now some of them are just optional things like a mini game where you can win items other things are actual side quests that you have to fly to but <clears throat> during the course of this game you will unlock chests that have may have money in it may have items in it that you need to upgrade and things so you're going to want to unlock these chests when you can but to get to them you have to fly around this open world atmosphere in the sky and it's fucking annoying, and it wastes so much time. I would like to challenge someone. I know it won't happen because it's very time-consuming, but I would love to see have someone see how much time I spent flying in this game because why the fuck you can't fast travel in a Zelda game in 2011? I'm fucking pissed. Okay, it's a Zelda game. It's traditional. You know, you have to walk everywhere you go. There's a lot of trap. Okay. It's 2011. It's time to get rid of our archaic ways and move into the now and the modern era. There's a reason why games don't make you backtrack, don't make you fucking travel and fly around for hours on end. It's because it's fucking boring. The flying in this game is boring as fuck, and you're going to waste hours doing it because the game won't just let you travel to the fucking three locales that you want to go to. What are you going to do? You're going to do a dungeon. You're going to fly back to the city. You're going to fly to something to unlock something. You're going to fly back to the city. You're going to fly to another locale so you can do a dungeon. Then you're going to fly back to the city. Then you're going to fly somewhere to unlock something. You're going to fly back to the city. What the fuck? Just let me go there. I don't want to fly. It's fucking stupid. It's a gimmick to use the motion controls and say that the motion controls were used a lot in Skyward Sword. No one wants to fucking fly for hours. Nintendo, wake the fuck up. It's 2011. It's not 1991. No one wants to waste 20 hours flying around like a fucking asshole. Okay. <clears throat> I got that off my chest. I'm sorry. The flying pissed me the fuck off. It's such a waste of my time. And it's something, you know, okay, the game's 36 hours long, but if you tend to spend 10 hours wasting your time flying, that's fucking a cop-out by Nintendo. Okay, the one other thing that really annoyed me, 
didn't really annoy me, but it's kind of unfortunate, is a lot of the monsters and boss fights and everything in this game are geared towards motion control, but a lot of the time what ends up happening is it's not really a fight, per se. It's just an enemy who walks up, and he goes like this. And he's just standing here like this. So, obviously, I have a motion control. Am I going to attack the side of him that has a sword, and he's going to block? Or am I going to attack the side of him? Oh, that's going to hit him in the face. Obviously, you're going to swing this way and hit him in the face. And even the final boss fight was like that. And it's annoying that, like, it's just, okay, okay, I'm coming for you. What are you going to attack? Obviously, you're going to stab him in the face because that's the open area. And a lot of the enemies in the game don't ever really attack. They just walk up blocking. And you just have to attack around where they're blocking. And that's kind of weird that in a Zelda game, here are enemies that are so stupid they just walk up blocking, and it's, you can tell the reason it was done is so that you can make use of the motion controls, and so the motion controls in some ways kind of do hinder this game. <clears throat> so overall, what do I think of Zelda Skyward Sword? Well, first of all, it actually is one of my favorite games of 2011, okay? I enjoyed it a lot, I loved playing it, and uh, when I beat it, with 36 hours in, obviously any game you put 36 hours into, you've gotten a major investment, but I, I felt, wow, I feel accomplished, I beat it, I put the time in. The ending of the game is actually pretty damn good again, like I said, being that it is uh, has continuity with the rest of the Zelda universe, I actually enjoyed the ending and I felt rewarded for putting in the time that I did in the game. If you're a Zelda fan, you're going to like this game. And that's why these idiot Zelda hardcore people, oh, it's a 10 out of 10, oh, it's the best game ever. No, it's definitely not the best game ever. It's definitely not the best Zelda game. I, I'll tell you right now, A Link to the Past, SNES, 1990s, blows this game away. Because that game did a bunch of revolutionary stuff. The only revolutionary thing that Skyward Sword does is put this into the fucking game. And since this is a gimmick... Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Sure, it's fun to do combat with this, but this isn't the next generation of gaming. This is a gimmick, okay? Back when, again, Link to the Past came out, new items, it was a, the best graphics of the time, an expansive world, it basically doubled even, you know, it, made, it was a huge world compared to the original Zelda games. And I know a few people say, oh, it's unfair, how could you compare that to this? It's a completely different era, it's a different thing. Well, sorry. You know, I'm going to compare it to other games that I've played, especially other Zelda games that I've played, and uh, it's definitely not the best Zelda game ever, okay? It's still a damn good game. It's just not the, it, it, this fanboyish thing where, oh, it's the best fucking Zelda, and I've waited my whole life for this game. Those people are assholes who are saying that. They basically have no taste, haven't played other games, and they're just being fanboyish idiots. I really do like the game. The combat's fun when it works. The dungeons are interesting. However, the backtracking is fucking annoying as hell. You will waste your time for hours flying around for no fucking reason, just because the game forces you to. And uh, <clears throat> the combat is kind of repetitive and hindered because of the motion controls. So, it's a mixed bag. It's still a good Zelda game. It's just not amazing to me. Um... In scope of all the other games that I've played this year, now keep in mind, I'm comparing this to everything, including some of the best games I've played, like Portal 2, Batman Arkham City, Skyrim, which I'm still playing. I'm going to give this game... Uh-oh, here we go. Get ready. Don't you fucking dare. You stay back. I'm giving Zelda Skyward Sword an 8.25. Oh! 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 Okay, your reaction, however you want to you wanna have it. If you think that's too high of a score, you think that's too low of a score. The game is good. The game is great bang for your buck. But it's repetitive. It's too much backtracking. It's too much wasting your time. It's bore, just downright boring in parts. And the motion controls, in my opinion, hinder the game. It's fine if you want to play with motion controls, but there's no fucking excuse that they didn't put in the option to play without it. In fact, the majority of people that I know who bought this game have all expressed the opinion we would rather have played Skyward Sword on a regular controller. We don't know why Nintendo is forcing our mo their motion controls down our throats. We just want to play a good game. We don't want to buy into their gimmicks. 
We just want to play good classic Nintendo games. And if that's what the Wii was all about, and the Wii was pumping out games like Skyward Sword the entire time it was out, you wouldn't have people like me who rant about it all the time, saying what a piece of fucking shit it is, because it was just a cheap cash-in by Nintendo. It's why they've lost the majority of their hardcore fan base, and people have moved on to other consoles to look for quality gaming experiences. It's a shame, because I know a lot of people won't play this game, because they... My time ran out. I ranted so long that my time actually ran out on my camera, so I had to edit this part in to finish my review. But Skyward Sword... Now keep in mind, I didn't play Twilight Princess, but Skylight, Skyward Sword for me actually is a system seller for the Nintendo Wii. Problem being, it's the last good game for the Nintendo Wii. So, are you going to rush out to buy a whole console to play one game? Probably not. And so, I really feel that Nintendo had a huge blunder here that they waited so long to release this game, and now, unfortunately, a lot of people, even now, me playing it, Ooh, a lot of people are, are criticizing and saying they don't want to play it, you know? They want to see me play other games, and I understand that, but I really get the feeling that a lot of people who normally would have played a game like this are, didn't play it because it was on the Wii, and the Wii is on the way out. <clears throat> so in conclusion, Skyward Sword, it's a good game. It's one of my favorite games of the year, actually, but... Uh, but... It has too many problems for me to put it as, like, the best game of the year. You know what I mean? I can't even give it a 9 because the motion controls actually hinder it, and it's too repetitive, too boring, and there's too much backtracking, and the flying is completely worthless. I don't know what they were thinking putting that shit in the game. In this day and age, again, and I'm going to say it again, Nintendo, in this day and age, you are not better than everyone. You are not immune to criticism. You are not immune to the same things that everyone else has chosen to adopt, okay? There's a reason why fast travel exists in games. And, okay, there's never been fast travel in Zelda before. So what? It's time to adopt modern conventions in your games. The fact that you have to waste hours flying around in this game is a huge detriment, especially to people who don't have a lot of time. What if I'm only playing Zelda two hours a day, and it's fine, okay, it takes me a month to beat it, but because you are flying around all the time, that's fucking frustrating. So, fuck Nintendo for thinking that they're better than everyone else, and they don't have to actually adopt modern conventions into their games, and they could just do whatever they want. No, you're not immune. And therefore, for me, my personal score, Zelda Skyward Sword, a good game, definitely a must-buy if you have a Wii, but I only give it an 8.25 because it is so frustrating with the motion controls and the repetitive nature of a lot of the parts of the game. That being said, I still enjoyed it a hell of a lot, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed my playthrough. I tried to make it as entertaining as I could with as long of a game as it was. Um, <clears throat> but I now kind of feel relieved that I'm beating it because I can move on to other things. There have been other games and things that I've been wanting to work on, and I knew I had to get past this game first, so I'm excited. And, uh, and so ends our saga of Zelda Skyward Sword. I hope you have enjoyed this Hateful Truth review. I hope it was revealing and uh, informative to you. And I will see you next time for another uh, Hateful Truth video game review. Thanks. Trolls, stay the fuck away! I'm not gonna put up with this shit!